in full week two fantasy football preparation mode right now. And when we're looking back at week one at the quarterback position in specific in fantasy football, nobody really popped off besides Tua Tunga Vailoa. You had a lot of surprise top five appearances from guys like Jordan Love, Mac Jones, Anthony Richardson, Deshaun Watson, and you had a lot of bad weeks from studs like Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow. The kinks are going to start to get worked out in week two fantasy football, so do not panic because we need to go over the top 12 quarterback rankings in week two fantasy football. I am recording this at midnight, guys, and I will be up all night making sure that this content gets out to you on time in time for you to prepare for week two fantasy football. So please make sure to go down there and drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already to show the channel support guys. And just for fun and just because I love you guys, I'm going to be throwing in two extra bonus plays at the quarterback position at the end of this video right here. So number one, starting out with tier one, all of these guys are great options this week. I think there's going to be a lot of bounce back weeks. Starting out with a bounce back week from Jalen Hurts, taking on the Minnesota Vikings on Thursday night in Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts, I said it all week leading up to last week. I didn't think this was going to be a clean matchup for the New England Patriots or the Philadelphia Eagles. It was a scrum football game, and it showed. Jalen Hurts did not have a great fantasy output last week. This is a much, much better matchup. Minnesota is awful, awful defending the pass. Jalen Hurts in prime time, I expect him to have a much better week this week. He's got all of his options still healthy. He was still good from a football perspective, but I think this week in fantasy football, Jalen Hurts is going to be tremendous, and he's back to being a number one quarterback in fantasy football. And then we've got Patrick Mahomes at number two in the matchup of the week for fantasy football against the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville. Last week, I said the Los Angeles Chargers and the Miami Dolphins was the matchup of the week. This week, it's the Kansas City Chiefs and the Jacksonville Jaguars here. I love this matchup on both sides of the ball. You've got two top tier quarterbacks, obviously the best quarterback in football. This guy is going to be great this week. Hopefully they'll have Travis Kelsey this week. This offense definitely needs him. But even when they didn't have Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes was still a tremendous quarterback. He was just in a situation where the offense was in total disarray. I don't think his wide receivers are going to do that bad in week two. So I do think that Mahomes is going to be a great option here. This is going to be a fireworks matchup. You want in on this matchup here. Trevor Lawrence, same matchup here in number three. Trevor Lawrence is also a tremendous play. All of his options are healthy and his options are actually better. Aside from Travis Kelsey, but who knows if he plays. Calvin Ridley, spectacular. I took my L on him publicly a couple of days ago in a live stream. Calvin Ridley was tremendous, and he will continue to be that. Zay Jones, always a big play threat. Never know when he pops off. Christian Kirk, not good last week in week one, but he is still on a big deal. He will be involved in this offense, and obviously Evan Ingram at the tight end position. And Travis Etienne, by the way. This team is so stacked with weapons here. They've got all the weapons that Trevor Lawrence needs. I think he's going to have a bounce back week in week two. Number four, I've got Justin Herbert taking on the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee this week. Justin Herbert was a little bit disappointing when you added it up last week. I thought he was going to give you like a 30 point game. He didn't do that exactly. His offensive line let him down in key moments in that game against Miami. I don't think it's going to happen again versus Tennessee though. Tennessee is awful awful defending the pass. I think Justin Herbert and the Chargers are going to absolutely take advantage of that matchup and rebound this week. Justin Herbert to me in this type of matchup is a simple no-brainer here to be in tier one. Now dropping down to our next tier, we've got Lamar Jackson kicking it off, taking on the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Obviously Lamar Jackson was really bad last week in fantasy football. He threw a pick against the Houston Texans. Lamar Jackson was not very good in fantasy football. Obviously, Houston is not a good team, so people are wondering why this happened. What I've been saying leading up to the season is that I think that Houston is actually going to end up being a really de decently competitive team by like mid to late season. They're obviously run by a defensive coach. Their defense looked really, really good at some points in that week one game until their offense just couldn't keep up and the defense was just tired. Lamar Jackson is going to have a better situation this week against Cincinnati. It's going to be more competitive. He's going to need to throw the ball more. There's going to be more passing opportunities in this game. Lamar Jackson, I think, is going to be fine long term. And I think he bounces back as soon as week two. Dropping down to number six, my guy, Anthony Richardson. 
taking on the Houston Texans in Houston this week. I said it earlier in the week. I mentioned him in my buy low trade targets after week one before week two. Anthony Richardson was on that video because while it may not sound like a trade low type of deal, this guy I think is going to be a lot better sooner than we thought. Anthony Richardson, his reality is he is dealing with a great offensive minded head coach. Shane Steichen was very, very responsible and had a major hand in Jalen Hurts' development last year. This guy is widely regarded as a great offensive mind across the league. I think it's going to be tremendous for Anthony Richardson, and he was already very, very good last week. When you look at his stat line on the screen, it was a very impressive debut. Easily the best rookie quarterback debut of the week. I think he continues to build off of that, and he's got a much easier matchup this week against the divisional opponent with Houston. I love, love Anthony Richardson, not only this week, but moving forward. Josh Allen at number seven, gonna sound low to people, taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. Obviously, it's gonna sound low to people, not only because he's got the big name, and he's Josh Allen, and we know what he can do in fantasy football when he's on, but also because the matchup here is pretty easy. I'll tell you this right now, I actually came away a little bit concerned with Josh Allen. Josh Allen was very, very sloppy in that game on Monday night against the New York Jets. Like, super sloppy. The guy was taking all kinds of hits. Josh Allen just looks a little bit reckless to me right now. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. You guys let me know in the comments what you think of Josh Allen. I think he's still going to be a great fantasy player. I don't think he'll have quite as many turnovers against a lesser defense this week. But I am worried about it to the point where I'm dropping him down to number seven when he originally is going to be like a top tier type of guy week to week in fantasy football. Number eight, I've got Tua Tungavailoa taking on the New England Patriots in New England. Obviously, Tua had the boom game last week. Quarterback one on the week in that tremendous matchup. Threw for over 400 yards. Over 200 of those were to Tyreek Hill. Obviously, he's got the weapons, right? Tua Tungavailoa is never going to be lacking weapons unless one of them gets hurt. This is a much tougher matchup, though. In New England, on the road, this is a much tougher defense than the Chargers are as well. So I think that he comes back down to earth this week. I don't think that Tua is really going to be a bad fantasy option most weeks during 2023. As long as Miami keeps him upright and their offensive line can protect him, I think that Tua is going to be great in fantasy football. But I do think that he comes back down to earth just a little bit against the New England Patriots this week. Number nine, I've got Justin Fields taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa Bay this week. Obviously, Justin Fields was a big disappointment. He was one of my top five most drafted players in fantasy football this year, so I felt that one in particular. I won most of my fantasy leagues this week, but that still definitely put a cap on my team's upside in fantasy football this past week. I think he's going to be fine. I just think that he needs to find his groove, and I think that when this team looks back to the offense and what they did in week one, they'll realize that they didn't target a guy like DJ Moore enough. I think DJ Moore gets it going in week two, and I think it's going to help out Justin Fields a lot, just opening up the offense as a whole. Number 10, Jared Goff taking on the Seattle Seahawks in Detroit this week. I like Jared Goff in fantasy football. I know he's a really boring fantasy football quarterback, but Jared Goff really is a top fantasy option as far as quarterbacks go. He really doesn't have many bad games. Jared Goff in this matchup against Seattle, a team that just got absolutely embarrassed by the Los Angeles Rams. I think that Jared Goff could take advantage of this. He's got his weapons, obviously. He had a good week last week to build on. Detroit is coming into this game with some serious momentum here. Joe Burrow at number 11, taking on the Baltimore Ravens in Cincinnati this week. Obviously, Joe Burrow was the big zero of the week at quarterback, right? Out of any top tier quarterback option in fantasy football, Joe Burrow sucked the most, easily. Worse than Lamar Jackson, worse than Josh Allen. Joe Burrow was, in, he was honestly embarrassing. He didn't even throw for 100 yards in that game. This is par for the course for Joe Burrow here. And that's the reality. Last three years, he has dealt with the same exact issue of not being available leading up to the regular season start. 2021, dealing with the recovered torn ACL. 2022, appendicitis knocked him out for a long time. And obviously, the calf injury knocked him out. So the past three seasons, he's had little to no offseason prep leading into the early month of the season here. Joe Burrow's gonna be fine. He's gonna be he's gonna rebound this week in a much tougher matchup, obviously, in another divisional matchup, obviously, but they're going to be so much more competitive this week because they're at home and they were just embarrassed in that week one matchup. 
I've got Deshaun Watson at number 12, rounding it out, taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh on Monday night. Deshaun Watson, I think that the thing about him is that I can't rank him much higher than this because when I think back to Deshaun Watson in his heyday with Houston, I don't see that special quality with him anymore. I don't, I don't see that fire there. Like, I don't see the spark. I just don't think he's the same player. And I think that it's going to be very matchup dependent for Deshaun Watson moving forward. The good thing is, the matchup here is very good. Pittsburgh's defense is not nearly as good as a lot of people were thinking. And I called that out in my top 12 defense rankings in all the way back to July. I was saying that Steelers were not a top 12 defense and I caught a lot of flack for it. I caught up to them against the San Francisco 49ers. I think that Deshaun Watson this week is going to be fine just because of matchup alone. And my two bonus guys on this list, Daniel Jones, Dak Prescott. Daniel Jones taking on the Cardinals in Arizona. Dak Prescott taking on the Jets at home. Daniel Jones, obviously he was the other big zero out of a lot of quarterbacks this week. Daniel Jones and the entire Just Giants team was just embarrassed in week one versus the Dallas Cowboys. Total embarrassment at home. So it's hard to, it's hard to rank a guy like that coming off that bad of a week. I've said it with Saquon Barkley, though, earlier today. The matchup here is just so good. It's so good. Against Arizona, possibly the worst team in the NFL, he's going to be fine. He's going to have a bounce-back week this week. And then Dak Prescott, obviously, much tougher matchup. Taking on the Jets defense, who just really embarrassed Josh Allen a little bit on Monday night. Dak Prescott, to me, it's going to be very matchup-based. He's really in that middle tier of fantasy quarterbacks this week. I think he's just a decent bonus option. So let me know what you think of the rankings in the comments below and what questions you need answer for week two fantasy football. And I will go down there and answer every single question that I possibly can in the comments below. And if you wanna see the top 30 running back rankings for week two fantasy football, click on this video right here.